Thank you, Salish. It's a real pleasure to be here. And just before I start, I would just like you all just to consider this question, just to take a quick moment. What if your whole life has been wrong? On a bleak, cold and wet day, in March 2005, a man wakes up in a cold sweat. He stares at the ceiling. His mind is racing with thoughts of anxiety and doubt. His stomach is churning. He thinks, I can't continue living the life that I'm living. He's overcome with a crippling depression and a gnawing anxiety. He just can't get out of that bed and face the reality that he's created. He asks, why does my life feel so wrong? Well, if anyone was looking at this situation, they would think, well, this guy's got one serious hangover, or he's one step away from seeing a psychiatrist. That guy was me. But before all that happened, I was living the life of a successful sales insurance guy, hopping around from door to door, calling in business people and unsuspecting homeowners, selling personal accident insurance. So, to take you through a bit of my day, I used to go around door to door and I'd call into these people, and I remember I'd go into John, and I'd say, well, look John, God forbid, if you fell down that stairs and broke your leg, or God forbid, John, you crashed your car and you ended up in hospital, who would pay those bills? Well, John, the great news is that this fantastic insurance policy will absolutely cover you for everything. And it was like selling monkeys, sorry, it was selling bananas to monkeys. But that was the outside of it. But behind it all, for me, there was a deep turmoil and stress within me. As in that I was very stressed and there was very long hours in regard to the work I was doing, and also the sales targets were extremely unrealistic for me. <coughs> and as a result, I was on average drinking about 40 to 50 cups of coffee a day. I was smoking about 30 cigarettes a day, and also the faster the food was, the better. So for me, around this time, I was really questioning what was going on for me. And I remember, I used to go around door to door and people would actually slam the door in your face. So there was a big amount of rejection for me. I remember one case, there was um, like a German shepherd chasing me down the road and it was definitely a sight for sore eyes. <laughs> so there were many days you go into these daily motivational sales meetings and you'd have to pretend you're happy and, and all of that. But most days I was going pretty depressed and pretty negative. And they had a, a very special technique to get you positive and motivated again. And I'll just share it with you there actually, but they, actually, they said you, you stand up at these meetings and you go, I feel healthy, I feel happy, I feel terrific. I feel healthy, I feel happy, I feel terrific. Well, I didn't feel very healthy, I didn't feel very happy, and I certainly didn't feel terrific. Well, to say the situation was a bit of a disaster is a bit of an understatement. So there I was, I woke up in March 2005, staring at the ceiling and asking myself the question, why does my life feel so wrong? Well, I knew I had two choices. One choice was continue living the life that I was living, or two, change my life and go in a new direction. But at the time, I didn't really know how. So I continued for the next number of years, living this erratic and jobs that I didn't really like in the first place. I remember one of my last jobs was a recruitment consultant. And if you saw me inside in the office, you would definitely say I was probably the most unmotivated, unenthusiastic employee you ever saw. <coughs> I definitely wasn't getting the employee the month anyway, I can tell you that much. But anyway, this day I got a phone call from my friend down in South Africa, 
and he invited me down to South Africa for a two week holiday. So I jumped at the chance and packed my bags and off I went. I was, before I knew it, I was hanging out in South Africa, enjoying the sun, the beers, and all of that. So I got the thought into my head to convince my friend, to convince me to quit my job. <laughs> so there I was, I sent my boss a lovely little email. Dear Mr. Smith, I regret to inform you that dot 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 dot. It gave me great pleasure to do so, to be totally honest with you. But I don't think he was overly joyed when he actually got that email. So there I was in South Africa, jobless, soulless, and absolutely clueless in regard to what the next step of my life would be. So at the time, I was doing a thing called The Artist's Way, which is basically, it's a more, you use mooring pages, and you use, it's, a, it's a way to actually connect with your authentic and creative self. So it's a free form of writing, and you do it every morning for three pages. And the thought came up through these pages for me to actually go to India. So I trusted the thought on a bit of a whim, booked a one-way ticket from South Africa, and I think my poor mum, God bless her, but she's still alive now, but she was having a stroke or a nervous breakdown one or the other when she heard all this stuff was going on. So I landed in Mumbai airport, and I was a bit of a shock to the system, to be totally honest with you, because the, the noise levels and the sounds and the whole lot was totally overwhelming for me. And this profound question came into my head. What the hell am I doing here? <laughs> so, well, I said I'd rather make the most of it. So I headed off to Goa, the beaches of Goa, and I lived the life of a beach bum slash hippie slash new age spiritual, whatever you want to call me. <laughs> And for about three or four months, and I got away with it. Like I was saying, oh, I'm trying to find myself, but yeah, whatever that means. So anyway, but I said, after about three or four months, I said, I better get my act together here. So I went off to a yogi ashram and trained to be a yoga teacher. So that really kind of changed my life to a degree. So I said, I felt I was ready now to go back to Cork and face the music, or I should say, face the reality of my situation. So I landed back in Cork and didn't really know or have a clue what I was going to do next. And to be honest with you, I had two choices for me when I was thinking about things. One was either to go back to my old way of living before South Africa, or two, look for a new and a different way in my life. So I chose the latter option, but I didn't know how to create this new way. So at the time, I was continuing to do the morning pages, and what came up for me was actually doing this creative writing and to explore this, because I was doing a lot of writing when I was actually in India. So I decided to investigate, and I ended up in a master's in journalism, and, well, partly I did the journalism to develop my creativity, but the other part was to escape the world of work for another 12 months. <laughs> so anyway, I continued doing that, and while I was doing this, I started a little radio show called The Health Zone, and which has now evolved into like, like an online and an offline platform for, for health and well-being. And part of the process of the creative journey with the artist's way for me has really been helping me to learn and trust myself. And as a result of being on this journey, I, from the, with the health zone, I developed events as well as had the honour and the privilege to interview various different people like Marion Williamson, Dr. Bruce Lipton, Muji, and many others. And it reminds me of a time going back about six or seven years ago when I was having another little mini crisis in my life regard to what to do next. It was actually with my friend Aaron, he's actually in the audience tonight, and we were having this deep, profound conversation about the meaning of life and what to, what to do with life. And he asked me, what would you really, really love to do with your life? And I said, well, what I really would love to do is actually interview inspiring people. And at the time, I didn't really believe it was a possibility or even a reality for me. But, you know, but, so, so you may be asking yourselves, like, why am I telling you, telling you all of this? Well, look, it's not to boost my own ego, but it's more to share with you that it's when I started to really trust and listen to myself that I became happier and more peaceful in my life. That's when I started to trust the process and focus on the process rather than the outcome like a sales crazy lunatic of a, of a salesman, that I started becoming more present and connected to who I was. 
And it's when I started to really approve and accept myself that it was then I became who I really am. So now imagine in your own life and you're living your life based on the approval, the acceptance and the recognition of yourself. And you're realizing your full and true potential. As you journey through the, the journey of life, you have a choice to make in regard to what feels right and what feels true for you. You'll no longer dance to the music or to the drumbeat of other people around you, but you'll be listening to the clear inner knowing and that feeling and the optimal trust within yourself in how to create a life which feels authentic and true for you. So the question now is, how can you go out and create a life which feels right for you?